let's talk about this idea of an exponent here. So if I have the number 10, here we're taking exponents when we apply them to, to the number 10, in other words, powers of 10. If we take the number 10 and we raise it to an exponent, which is a number four, what does this actually mean? So what it means is exponent, which is when you have the little number raised up above, it just is a faster way of multiplying something. You all know how to multiply things together, but we do, we do multiplication so much that we have a shorthand way of writing it down called an exponent. So when we have 10 raised to the power of four, what it actually means, if you write it all out, is it means 10 times, I'm gonna use a dot for the, for the multiplication, I'm not gonna use the x anymore because the x we're gonna be using for other, other things down the road. So it's 10 times 10, again times 10, again times 10. Notice that I have four tens on the board. That's because the exponent is a four. So whenever you take the number 10 and you raise it to a power of four, also called an exponent of four, all you do is you take the bottom number and you multiply it times itself and you have that many of the, of the exact same thing multiplied uh, times itself that many times. In this case, there's four tens here because the exponent is a four. All right, now what do you think is going to happen then? if we have the number 10 and we raise it to the power of three. Well, if this is 10 multiplied one, two, three, four times, 10 raised to the power of three is just going to be 10 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10. There's only 10 of the threes on the board multiplied together because the exponent is a three. So you can see the pattern here. What do you think is gonna happen when we have a 10 and we raise it to the power of two? When you raise it to the power of two, we have a, another word we use for that. We say it's 10 squared. When you see something is squared, it just means the power or the exponent is a two. That's all it is. When you see something cubed, it's a, that's another word that means power of three. So you might hear something squared, that's a power of two. Something cubed is a power of three. So what happens when we take the number 10 and we square it? In other words, we have the power of two. Then we just take 10 and we multiply it by itself and there's just two tens on the board. Now, don't let these dots confuse you. These dots I remember in the beginning always confuse me, but the dots just mean multiplication. They just mean the same thing as putting that X there. But we have to drop the X because very soon we're going to be using X's for other things in math. And it'll be very confusing to have X mean multiplication and also for X to mean something else. So we're not gonna do that anymore. We're going to drop that. Now, finally, what happens if you take 10 and we have a power of one, what do you think that's gonna be? Well, if this is four tens multiplied together and three tens multiplied together and two tens multiplied together, then what is 10 raised to the power of one? Well, it's just 10. So you can see the pattern here. When you have anything raised to the first power, it's just the same number. When you have anything raised to the second power, it's two of them multiplied together. Cubed, which means power of three, is three of them multiplied together. And when you raise to the power of four, it's four of them multiplied together. So you see the pattern. When you have something to the fifth power, it'll be five of those things all multiplied together. When you have to the sixth power, to the seventh power, to the 10th power, it doesn't matter. To the 250th power would just mean 250 of those things multiplied together times itself that many times. That's what it means. So let's actually crank through it now that we can kind of see this. 10 raised to the power of one is just 10. So I'm actually gonna draw a little arrow here and we're going to say that this is equal to 10. Obviously it is equal to 10 because we already wrote it here. But this one is a little bit different. What is 10 times 10? Now if you were to get 10 and put 10 under it and multiply it the long way, you know, zero times zero, zero times one, drop a zero, you do the long multiplication, what you're gonna get is 100. That's gonna be a 100. When you take 10 times 10, this is going to give you 100. We just figured this out. But if we multiply it by 10 again, what you're going to get when you do that is 1,000. And then, of course, we already know that three tens multiplied give us 1,000, so that these three multiplied together are 1,000. If we multiply by 10 again, we're going to get 10,000. Now, I really want you to study the pattern on the board because this is why we actually study powers of 10. Again, we, I say we use it in, in lots of science, chemistry, physics, math engineering, I mean, over and over again, there's lots of uses for this. The reason why we, uh, we, we're doing this here is I want to show you that when you have, uh, notice the pattern here, 10 raised to the fourth power is just a one followed by four zeros. 10 to the third power is just a one with three zeros. 
to the second power is just a one with two zeros, and to the first power is just a one with one zero. So you can very easily switch back and forth. What we're saying is that the number 10,000 is equal to 10 to the power of four. The number 1,000 is 10 to the power of three. The number 100 is equal to 10 to the power of two, and the number 10 is just equal to 10 to the power of one. It's just the number itself. And whether or not we write it out like this, or we write it like this is exactly the same thing. Why do you think we write things with powers and exponents? It's because writing big, big numbers like this, you have to write a lot of zeros. And when we have, let's say you're talking about the size of the universe or the size of the solar system in kilometers, let's say. It might be one with a ton of zeros at the end. You'll be writing zeros forever and ever because it's so big, it's such a big number. But when we can take this and write it with an exponent, we can shorten the number, but it means exactly the same thing. And the pattern is, whatever the exponent is, it's just a one with that many zeros, with that many zeros, with that many zeros that follow. Okay, so now that we know what powers of 10 really mean, we wanna do a few problems, okay? We're gonna be doing some conversions. We wanna convert for problem number one, convert the number below to a power of 10. So we wanna convert to a power of 10. So let's say you have the number 1,000. Now you can look at the chart, of course, but I want to go through it with you and see how can we, um, uh, uh, how can we uh, write it as a power of 10, okay? Remember the pattern here is that when we have 1,000, it's just 10 to the power of three because there's three zeros at the end. It's the same as 10 times 10 times 10, right? So what we can say is this is gonna be 10 to the power of what? Three, why? Because there's three zeros. So it's a one followed by three zeros, 10 to the power of three. It's exactly what we already wrote on the board here. And we already said that that's 10 times 10 times 10. When you multiply these together, you're going to get 1,000. When we write it in a power of 10, it's 10 to the power of three. All right, let's convert the following number uh, into a standard number. What if I give you 10 to the power of five. And I ask you, don't write it as a power of 10, write it as a, a full number. Now we don't have 10 to the power of five here, but you can see the pattern that all you do when you have 10 to the power of something is you put a number with that many zeros at the end. But what you really need to remember is that what this really means is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. One, two, three, four, five of them, that's what the exponent means. And so if you're writing it as a full blown number, it's one with five zeros after. And so we have one, two, three, four, five zeros after, and you put your comma in here, and so the answer is 100,000. So 10 to the power of five is 100,000, and the reason it's 100,000 is because this is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100, 100 times 10 is 1,000, 1,000 times 10 is 10,000, and 10,000 times 10, again, is 100,000. That's the final answer. All right, problem number three. Convert the number below to a power of 10. Well, the number is just 10 itself. So the answer that we have is just going to be 10 to the power of one. Remember, when you have a number raised to the number, the exponent of one, it's just, you're not really multiplying it by anything, so the answer is 10, and that's what we had on the board here. 10 to the power of one is just 10, is you're not multiplying it by anything, and so we just write that uh, there. You can remember in the back of your mind that anything raised to the one power is just the number itself because it's really not multiplied times anything else. All right, let's scoot along here to the next problem. Let's take a look at what happens when we have the number 10 raised to the power of two, and we wanna write it as a standard number. What does 10 to the power of two really mean? It means we have the number 10, and we multiply it times itself, and we only have two of these 10s because the power is two. And 10 times 10, when you multiply that out, is 100, and so if we were going to take 10 squared and write it as a number, it would be 100. Notice that it just means there's two zeros after the one. So you could skip this step. I'm showing it to you so you remember what the exponent means, but really 10 to the power of two, you can just skip straight to writing one with two zeros at the end. All right, all right, next problem. Let's convert the following number to a power of 10. We're gonna write down one million. 
the number here is 1 million. How do we write it as a power of 10? Maybe it's 1 million miles to the nearest, you know, uh, you know, star or to the nearest planet or something like that, but we don't want to write it all, as all these zeros here. How do we do it? Well, what we can do is we can say we can write it as a power of 10. We'll put it as 10 and the power needs to be the number of zeros here. One, two, three, four, five, six. 10 to the power of six. Why do I know that this is the case? Because 10 to the power of six is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. There should be one, two, three, four, five, six of them multiplied together. So 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, times 10 is 10,000, times 10 is 100,000, times 10 more is a million. And of course we can skip this by just counting the zeros and writing it as we have shown here. All right, next problem. Let's take this number, 10 to the power of four, and write it in standard, as a standard number. All right, well, 10 to the power of four, what does it mean? It means 10 multiplied by 10, multiplied by 10, multiplied by 10. There's just four of them because the power is four. And so you can multiply them and you can show what the answer is, or you can just look at this and say, well, it's gonna be a one followed by one, two, three, four zeros. Put a comma and the answer is 10,000. That's actually why we're learning powers of 10, because you can just look at the power and you know what that number is. When it's 10 raised to an exponent, you can immediately write it down. It's just gonna be the number one with this many zeros following that one. So that was 10,000. All right, so we have the final few problems here. Let's convert the following number to a power of 10. 100 comma 000 comma 000. This number in words is 100 million, right? Because this is the millions place, this is the 10 millions place, and this is the 100 million place. So this is 100 million. How do we write it as a power of 10? Well, we know that it's one followed by this many zeros, so we can write it as a 10 raised to the power of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10 to the power of eight. So you don't have to write the multiplications out. If it's one followed by a bunch of zeros, you can just simply say it's 10 raised to the power of how many zeros it is. So in this case, it's 10 to the power of eight. All right, next problem. Let's take this exponent, power of 10, and write it as a full-blown number, 10 to the power of seven. What does that actually mean anyway? Well, it's 10 times 10 times 10. That's three of them. Here's four of them. Here's five of them, here's six of them, and here's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 10 multiplied by itself, you have seven tens on the board and they're all multiplied by themselves. So how do we write this number out? Well, it's 10 raised to that power of seven. So we can just simply say it's a number one followed by this many zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put a comma after three, put a comma after three, and the answer you have is 10 million. That's the answer, 10 million. All right, only two more problems. Let's say we want to convert this to a power of 10. One, zero, 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 comma, zero, 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 comma, zero, zero, zero. We have, this is actually a new place value we haven't talked about. If this is ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, here's millions, here's 10 millions, here's hundred millions. Here's a new place value called billions. You ever heard of a billion dollars or a billion of something, a billion miles away? This is how, a billion looks, one with nine zeros at the end. But if I want to write it as a power of 10, all I have to do is say, well, it's gonna be 10 to the power of nine. Why? Because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros, so we already know the pattern. 10 to the power of nine is just gonna be a one with that many zeros, nine zeros at the end. And the way that you, I guess, could check yourself is you could say, well, this is the same thing as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's seven, here's eight, and here's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is what 10 to the power of nine is, which is the same thing as one billion. All right, final problem. Final problem. Let's take this, 10 to the power of 12 and let's write it as a full blown number. 10 to the power of 12. We've learned the pattern by now, so we know that 10 raised to the power of anything is just taking the number one with this many zeros after it. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 
put a comma here, put a comma here, put a comma here, put a comma here. How big is this guy? Well, if this is hundreds of thousands, and this is hundreds of millions, and this is hundreds of billions, then we have a new number that we have to talk about. We're talking about trillions. And that's a huge number we don't talk about too much every day, but after millions comes billions, and after that comes trillions. So 10 to the power of 12 is the same thing as 10 times 10 times 10. You do it with 12 tens multiplied together, the same thing as this large number with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 zeros at the end. So here we have covered the important topic of powers of 10. I can't really explain yet why it's really important, but we use it a lot when we talk about units of measure in science. Because in science, we have really, really big numbers to deal with. We also have really, really small numbers to deal with, which I haven't talked to you about yet, but we can also use powers of 10 to talk about really tiny numbers. Let's say we're talking about the size of an atom. We can use powers of 10, I'll show you later in another lesson, how to use powers of 10 to talk about the size of an atom or the size of a cell in your body. And also to talk about huge numbers like the distance to stars. So we don't want to write all those zeros out. We want to remember the pattern. And the pattern is that 10 raised to any power is the same as 10 multiplied by itself with that many. Uh, the exponent there tells you how many 10s are multiplied together. But at the end of the day, what's going to happen is you have a number one followed by that many zeros. The number of zeros is linked to the power that you have in your power of 10. And of course, when you see the the idea of power of 10 or power of something else and the idea of an exponent, they're the same thing. They mean the same thing. Different words, same thing. I'd like you to go through this again. Make sure you're understanding, getting all the correct answers. Follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice with powers of 10. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.